Welcome to ZCast, everyone. I'm Zias Caravalla from ZK Research, and I'm here at Gillette Stadium, uh, home of the New England Patriots. I'm with uh, Michael Israel. Uh, you're the CIO here, right? CIO of the Craft Group, yes. Welcome. Yeah, and how long have you been here? I've been here almost six years. Yeah, it's a big job. So uh, talk a little bit about that, what the job entails. Well, outside of the obvious of running IT for Gillette Stadium, the New England Patriots, New England Revolution, we also have the balance of the craft businesses, which is Ram Whitney Container Board, Ram Whitney Group, and International Forest Products, which are all vendors within the industry of, of paper, paper manufacturing, recycling, and moving paper around the world. Yeah, and we're here actually at a Cisco event, and I know that Cisco and the Patriots have had, and the craft group have had a relationship for quite some time. So can you talk about how that started and uh, what it entails today? Sure. Right now, we are using Cisco's products, one, to monitor the network with Cisco firewalls to all of our locations, as well as their advanced threat protection packages. Um, and last year, we rolled out a rather robust IP network to run over our broadcast operations. Yeah, I wanted to get into that a little bit. That was the uh, 2110 SMTPE network. Correct. Uh, that's, it's, uh, it's, it's pretty unique in its configuration and what it's used for. So can you double click on a little bit what, why it was important and what you're using it for? Sure, so prior to 2023, anytime we did a major event at the stadium that was being broadcast, we had to bring in broadcast trucks to actually do that. Which and is on, normal, right? Which is normal. Yeah. You're bringing broadcast trucks in, you're plugging in fiber right to the camera locations. Well, we eliminated that last year. Now, all of that's running through our own fiber network. Anything we're doing internally runs through our own production control room, which was built last year. All IP-based, <clears throat> every piece of content that's delivered across the stadium, whether it's audiovisual, whether it's on the menu boards, IPTV, or just audio in general, is all running through that network. Yeah, and that, that actually powers the new display here, right? Which is the Correct. largest screen in uh, North American Pro Sports. Correct. It's running all of our screens. It's now running our IPTV network, which we're in the middle of building out. Yeah, and uh, how and how important is that today from a fan experience perspective versus just a few years ago? Well, if you look at right, right now, now with two screens, a few years ago we had one major screen and everyone was looking one way. So now it, it's it's across the board. It's circular. Um, the amount of things that we can do with this network is also very versatile. Putting specific advertising up. Um, different entertainment components on a daily basis, and it's used every day. Yeah, that's awesome. It's great you're doing that. Now, one of the unique things you did here is, the, I was reading a little bit about this, was the data center design. You've got a red network, blue network. Correct. Uh, which are the team's colors, obviously. So talk about what you know, why that design and how it helps the teams stay up all the time. We have complete redundancy across the board. So at Gillette, I have over 125 IDFs throughout two data centers, two paths out, of the building. So if I lost a fiber connection on a individual switch, I have a redundant connection that's taken me the other way in the network. So it's essentially two diverse paths out. I could lose one entire side of the network. If I lose the blue, the red's running. If I lose the red, the blue's running. Yeah, and that, and the, the network's everything. And I was talking with one of the other sports guys about this where they had a storm come through and they weren't sure they were gonna have a network for a game and he was saying, look, without a network, there's no game. Without a network, there's, <laughs> well, there, you can still operate a game, but you you're can't not hearing people, anything, you're yeah. not getting people in. Yeah. You'd be running a game without people. Yeah, and that, uh, who wants to do that? I guess we did that in the pandemic, that wasn't much fun. Right? Yeah, it was yeah. not fun. Yeah. Now, the, the network also powers the production control room, mm -hmm. and there's quite a bit of advanced technology there. Yeah, can you just give a little bit of insight there? Well, any of the content that you see that's playing on the screens, we are also doing radio broadcasts all week long. We're producing video content that's all being built in-house in the production control room. Yeah. And uh, the other piece I want to touch on was the WebEx usage. Uh, I think started during the pandemic, the press conference component, right? Where uh, this is something I, I've seen more and more that I think the average fan doesn't even realize is going on, right? That we're using that kind of technology in the press rooms. Yeah, in the press rooms, we do collaboration on a daily basis. So pre and post game, we're using those rooms, but all through the week, the, anytime a player is speaking to the press, they're in our WebEx rooms doing that work attaching to whichever radio station or TV broadcast they need to. Yeah, and I'm assuming that when the World Cup comes here, that's going to be a big deal because you're going to want reporters to talk to players in other countries and things. There will be 
from the last I've heard, there may be as many as 500 different reporters here in the stadium for those events. Yeah, and they're going to want to talk to people Correct. in different countries. Yeah, And actually, uh, one of the interesting things that WebEx has now is the ability to translate. And so I think um, when I've talked to some of the other stadiums that participate in the World Cup, they're looking, you know, that just the ability to do different languages now has become almost a core component. Not just for the World Cup, but right now, yeah. two weeks ago we were in London. Yeah, that's we right. had a game in London. Last year we were in Germany. Next year we may be playing in Brazil. Um, we always have Spanish broadcasts going on, but now with the international games, German, French, Spanish, Portuguese, we're doing it all right now. Yeah, and I'd be remiss to talk to an IT pro without bringing up that two-letter thing everybody's talking about, which is AI. And uh, so what are you uh, currently doing? What are you thinking about doing, at least from an IT perspective? For the last several years, we've already brought AI into the environment for video-based analytics of our security environment. So looking at physical security, abnormally detection, looking at is someone climbing over a fence, leaving a bag behind, um, watching license plate numbers, is someone supposed to be here on campus? So we're using traditional DVR footage and using AI to intercept that run analytics against is something there that's not supposed to be. Yeah. As we go forward, we're slowly looking at how we adopt AI into the business as a whole. Yeah, I know Cisco's got quite a bit of AI stuff rolling out, uh, both on the security and the IT operation side. Is that something that, that uh, you'd like to do? Like, yeah, I, that's a, I, we're, we're watching. Yeah. Um, again, we're cautiously optimistic yeah. through all of these pieces. Where would you use it first? Thing? One of the first things we'd like to use is to, is to monitor all of our firewall rules. How can we make sure that they're all being used correctly? Are they still current? Do they need to be updated? Those types of pieces are critical for us. Yeah, actually, I think that's the hardest thing in IT to do right now is understand firewall rules. So, yep. uh, all right, well, anything else you want to add? All right, no, yeah. good. Yeah, well, I certainly appreciate your time. So on behalf of uh, Michael Israel from the Craft Group, correctly, right? I'm Zia Scaraval from ZK Research, and thanks for watching. Hit that subscribe button. I'll see you next time on the next episode of ZCast.